I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now we just have a few days to Christmas Day. Praise God. And you know what Christmas stands for? It stands for the day we celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. Now, Jesus himself signifies peace. And that's what the Lord have told us this whole month is all about. He himself is called the Prince of Peace. I'm going to talk to you about that in a moment. But before we go on, let me, let's call for that daily bread. Release your faith with me as we declare. Say, Father, I demand right now my daily bread is coming to me in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now then, we uh, have been talking about peace from the beginning of this month because the Lord told us it's a month of peace. And now listen. Uh, you, you need to, I've been telling you this thing, you need to make up your mind that you will surely enjoy all of God's best for your life. You are not going to ignore by your ignorance or deliberate, ignor um, deliberate ignoring of that which God has given to you. You can't be lazy now. This is not the time to be lazy. You see, Jesus, the one that, that we celebrate this season, he is called the Prince of Peace. The Prince of Peace. Now, it lets you know that he has a role or he has authority over peace. He rules over peace. When you say somebody is the king of a certain region, it means that person is ruling over that region. That person has charge over that region. So Jesus, who is called the Prince of of peace. Why is he called the Prince of Peace? Because the Holy Spirit, who is his father, he is the King of Peace. The Bible lets that let us know when Melchizedek showed up. He called Melchizedek the King of Peace, King of Salem, King of Peace. And Jesus, that the book of Matthew tells us, he is the child of the Holy Ghost. He is now called the Prince of Peace. So we see that he has a, an authority to superintend over peace. Now I've explained all this to you, how he gave up his peace. So it's not a, a, a title that was given to him. No, he earned that name. See that? He earned that name. The reason is because he sacrificed his peace and he gave it to us. But you see, most times we don't know how we enjoy or how we are supposed to take hold of our peace. And this is very, very important. And, and if, if no one instructs us properly, we'll be making terrible mistakes in our lives. For example, our, our nation, that's Nigeria, we're in that electioneering process. Now, do you get to think that, come, you know, the Bible says we should pray for all men, right? And it told us why we should pray for all men, so that so we will live a quiet and a peaceable life in all godliness. Now, when the Bible instructs that we pray for all men, see, he's also saying, watch over all men, because he instructs us to watch and pray. So when we pray, we watch. You can't be praying for someone not to make a mistake. And you see the person going in the direction of making the mistake and keep quiet and say, no, my prayer is doing the work. Listen, we must be deliberate. Now, our fathers who have gone ahead of us were deliberate in certain things. And because they were deliberate, they were able to maintain the peace in our nation and also in our lives and in and, and the body of Christ. But then we over here seem to take a lot of things for granted. 
Now, we, we have an election coming up. And I don't know how many of you are seriously praying. Now, the prayer is not, you know, like some people say, it's already too late to pray. It's never too late to pray. If you understand God, if you know God, it's never too late to pray. Now, so you will live a quiet and a peaceable life in all godliness. So you will live a quiet and a peaceable life in all godliness. It's important you pray. Now, here's the point. Because sometimes you hear ignorant people saying, we pray too much in this country. You don't know what prayer have done for us. You don't understand. Is there all the other nations that are doing so well, they don't pray like we pray. Who told you that? You know, people speak so ignorantly. I mean, so ignorantly. Do you know, for example, the U.S., as you have it now, do you know how they came about? This is by prayers. Men prayed and by prayer took actions that brought about the United States of America. The Europe that you want to copy, do you know how they came about? Do you know how they came about the blessing that they enjoy till this day? It is by prayer. See, they were so... Um, now, now, you don't have to even think too much. You know the Queen of England, she's the, or the, the King of England right now, is the head of the Church of England. Now, that should tell you that the Church has a major role to play. Now, this is UK itself. But then, go study history. You will see the role the Church played. Now, think about it. The Church in Europe exported Christianity to Africa. Now, what does that tell you? That should tell you that they were so prosperous, they were so blessed, they were so confident of themselves that they felt it is time to push this into other regions. And they went by faith. That is what prayer does. Prayer helps you take the right decisions that will not just help you, but help others. Now, they came in and they began to build schools for us. They began to, you understand what I'm saying? They began to build schools. Now, those were a work of prayer. So don't tell me we pray too much. We've not even started praying. What do you mean we've not started praying? Because we've not started taking actions as a result of our prayers. When it comes to our nation building. Now, we've been doing this in, in churches. In, in, so you see mega churches. You see wonderful buildings but we have not come together and say hey it is time to by faith change our nation we haven't done that yet when we do and, 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 and now when i say when we do hey i'm not talking about the future i'm talking about now we have to put our heads down now and begin to release our faith where our nation is concerned. We need to begin to pray now. And as we pray, the Lord will begin to birth in us the, the desire, the ideas, the thoughts. Then we'll begin to take actions by those promptings that the Lord is laying in our hearts where our nation is concerned. And this is the time to pray. I see believers who who are so ignorant. And, and because you're, if, if you don't pray, the Lord will not speak to you. You can't just sit down and, and be eating anyhow and, 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 and playing anyhow and think, oh, God, God is in charge of our nation. No, first of all, you will not have sight. You can't see. You can't see. I, I hear believers saying that, oh, there is nothing wrong, for example, there is nothing wrong with the Muslim, Muslim ticket. I mean, what is there? After, after, as long as we're going to get good governance, what is wrong there? Hey, don't be a fool. Life is more spiritual than it is physical. You see, when it comes to governance and authority, people have a lot of ignorance. I'm sorry to say. Even lots of pastors are ignorant about these things. You don't know 
You don't know. You see that throne, that seat of government? You don't know that there are angels that protect that seat. And you don't understand that Satan is so interested in that seat of authority. Oh, there are lots and lots of uh, um, um, scriptures to enlighten us in this area. Did you read about Daniel praying? And his prayer was held back for 21 days. Now, God answered him. The moment he began to pray, God answered him. But then his the answer was held for 21 days. What made the answer to be held for 21 days? Because an angel that was in charge of the region held the angel that God said, no, no, people don't understand this thing. You know, people thought, you know, sometimes they say, you know, the Prince of Pesha. The Prince of Pesha was not an evil spirit. The Prince of Pesha was an angel from God. Now, angels have different roles they play. Many of you don't understand these things. So, because you don't understand, you take wrong decisions and you suffer the consequences of it. The priest of Pesha was an angel that was put in charge of the throne, the, 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 the whole region of Pesha. An angel was in charge. Now, now, why would an angel obstruct another angel? Oh, it's authority and protocol. That's what it is. Authority and protocol. Now, that prince of Persia, his job was to see to it that Persia in itself maintains its peace, maintains its reign until the time appointed uh, uh, to fulfill all the time appoint, appointed by God. Now, Daniel was not a citizen of the, the, the region of Persia. You know that. Now, Daniel was a Jewish fellow. He was a Hebrew guy. Now, because they were Israel was in captivity under the reign of Persia. Now, what happens to them? Daniel praying. And because he had a personal relationship with God, God answered his prayer and sent an angel. So God heard Daniel's voice. But then there are protocols. The angel is coming. He is not going to Israel. He is coming to Persia to deliver this message. But then by coming to Persia, he has to follow the protocols. Now this is in the Bible. I'm not making this up. So he got to the prince of Persia to get permission to come in. But the prince of Persia is not aware of Daniel's prayers. You see that now? Why? Because the prince of Persia is not superintending over the person of Daniel. Daniel has his personal relationship with God. And the information Daniel was trying to assess. Now, believe me and believe these things. They could cause some kind of security threats. So the moment the prince of Persia saw this angel coming in, he had to stand and he had to withstand him and say, no, you are not going. Because my job is to maintain the peace in this area. But Daniel was inquiring of something beyond the realm of Persia. Now, what did God do when God realized that for 21 days, Daniel is still talking, he's still making requests. So God sent Michael because now Michael is Israel's prince. So you have the prince of Persia, then you have the prince of Israel. The prince of Israel is Michael. Now follow me. Well, how come Michael was no longer there? Yeah, because the moment God decided Israel was going into captivity, the first thing God did was to withdraw their prince. Because the job of their prince was to see to it that they are protected. There is no way Michael will be there and another nation will come and conquer Israel. That would be impossible. So the first thing God had to do when according to his wisdom, he has decided that they go into captivity, he withdrew their prince. Michael was withdrawn. 
Now you remember when Lord help us. So Michael was withdrawn and then they were exposed so they were able to capture them. Because remember God had warned them that when they come don't fight them. Study the book of Jeremiah. Don't fight them. Just follow them. If you fight, you will not they will overpower you. Why? Because my grace will not function. Now, so when Daniel prayed and his prayer was not getting through, the angel was held back. God had to send Michael, his prince, now not his personal prince, the prince of his nation, to go to discuss with the king, prince of Persia. And they had that communication before the angel that was sent from heaven was released. Don't tell me authority don't matter. Don't tell me authority don't matter. So you are there assuming there are, there are lot, lots of lots of things I, I can tell you when my time is up. But hey, listen, be smart. Pray. That's the thing. Pray. When you pray, God will open your eyes. When you pray, God will reveal things to you. And then you'll be able to make the right decisions that will help you, that will help your children. I'm not scared of our nation because God has already shown me what's going to happen already. So I'm at peace. But then there is, there is the, the issue here is, are God's children ready for what God is about to do? I'll share that with you tomorrow. Father, I pray that you open the eyes of our understanding more and more. Hey, Kunasia Barataki Adabash. Open the eyes of our understanding more and more. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye bye.